Yeah. All right, what's up, everybody? Uh, welcome to another episode of Behind the Counter. I'm your host, Rich. Uh, shut the music off. I'm your, <laughs> I'm your host, Rich Stamberlin, and with me, as always, is the star of the comedy remake of Born Identity, The Blorn Identity, Jonathan Adler. <laughs> Jonathan Blorn, coming from you live in Queens, New York. What's, uh, what's the premise of The Blorn Identity? I don't know, man. You're going to have to tell me. <laughs> They find you and you know exactly who you are, but nobody believes you. <laughs> hey, yeah, man, I'm Jason Bourne. Jason Don't you know me? Haven't you heard my work? Pro frat guy, Jason Bourne. Bourne. <laughs> so what's up, man? Did you have Andrew write that bit? <laughs> <laughs> Come on. Oh, I've been partying over all night over this name. John, uh, Andrew writes raw. I write SmackDown. <laughs> what's his nose say over there? What you, what you been? T- what you, I, been? you know what? I'm not even gonna check, man. I guarantee you, there's no. It's a blank screen. <laughs> it's a. It's an open notepad file. That says, don't forget to do the DOS show it's later. Picture, it's just a picture of dicks. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what's up, man? Not a whole lot, man. I like your shirt. Thank you. I like your face. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> what's up? Uh, nothing, man. I'm just trying to open up a little timeline, which I can't find because all my stuff looks great. Yeah, I uh, I was trying to look at that before. Uh, today, uh, in case that you've been living on the rock this week, Marvel announced, uh, which is what we're going to talk to uh we were going to talk about a lot this week is that Marvel announced like the second coming of every awesome thing ever. Ever. Um, they've charted movies out pretty much until like almost 2020. I want to say, right? Uh, yeah, I think 2019 was the was the, uh, the cutoff. <laughs> it sounds so futuristic. It is in the future, but you know, who who have thought we'd be living in the uh, strange times? You know, strange times for especially for movies, man. Like they they they've proved that. Uh, people still have money to go to the movies, and the, these movies will get bigger and better and bigger and better each year. And and varied too. I mean, we're hitting, we're, we're doing a gigantic net of the Marvel universe at yeah. this point. They're creating like their own movie universe, which is pretty bananas. You yeah, know? man. Um, but there's so many announcements this week, which we're gonna talk about. How uh, can I, I think not... we're gonna just talk about yeah, most of them. I, I I can't believe that I can't find a direct link to uh the actual timeline, but read off this way. Uh, so phase three, this is, this is going to be after, uh, Avengers Age of Ultron. Mm-hmm. This is going to signal in you know, Ant-Man and the new characters. Uh, it's pretty cool. If you think about it too, that we're going to be getting like a much larger Avengers team. Mm-hmm. Uh, we're getting to like big JLA numbers, like 12, 13, 14 members. The nitty gritty of like some cool stuff. You pretty know? awesome. So, which, which I also hope doesn't, doesn't make the movie quality suffer at all. You know, I hope not. Because one of the one of the news bits is um, Infinity War, right? Which is split into two movies, right? You know, which I think is a very smart thing to do. A la, yeah, Lord of the Rings, you know. Yeah. Uh, so the first movie out of Avengers two, uh, and starting Phase three would be Captain America: Civil War. Uh, this is we talked about this a little bit last week, I think. Yes. Uh, exciting shit. Mm. Exciting shit. Uh, it's just a matter of war. It'd be it's pretty amazing if they do. Somehow work out the Sony deal, which I still think is a figment of our imagination. That I really can't see it happening. With Spidey, yeah, yeah. If he did pay off at the end of Avengers two and have him show up or whatever, mm-hmm. it would be perfect timing for Captain America: Civil War for him to do. Oh, absolutely, massive, pretty, ama- pretty amazing. Uh, after that, we got Doctor Strange coming out November fourth, two thousand sixteen, uh, with the band of Cumberbatch. I love it, man. I, I think uh, it's one, one I never thought they'd do. It's not the guy that would mm-hmm. I would have picked, but I right. think it's an awesome choice. It's it's a really good choice because. Um, a the dude's a top notch actor. B he plays like a weird dude to a T. Oh yeah, you know on Sherlock, even his con was a little off kilter. You know. Yeah. Um, and plus like Doctor Strange is is Doctor Strange is one of those characters like Moon Knight where he's fascinating to fans. You know, but I could see how you know if you if you showed a picture of doctor strange to somebody they'd be like i don't care you know yeah. like who is this dude with a cape and like a goatee and like he's older who really gives a shit you know he's a tough sell i feel like and if you're yeah, not exactly you know. selling him is a difficult thing because mm-hmm. you've, if just to the layman you don't know like you've heard that storyline a hundred times over is you know the magician living in new york city who's taking care of people right see like on the surface that's like your weird like oh he's a magician that lives in new york city great you yeah. know who gives a shit yeah but you know when you get to the nitty-gritty of character he was a skilled surgeon who whose hubris cost him his hands in a car accident didn't know what to do with his life went to tibet found a bunch of monks they taught him the ways of the mystic arts and he's like the sorcerer supreme the magical protector of the world and also what's interesting too is that he's a character who doesn't have 
that real notable storyline aside from the origin. Yeah. Yeah. Like there's not there's not a, a um, definitive a definitive Doctor Strange. Like I know yeah. what my favorite Doctor Strange story is. I'm mm-hmm. sure it's yours also. Uh, the Marcus Martin. Oh yeah, 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 one yeah, yeah. stuff. Uh, but there's nothing for them to really hold a lab to and say like, okay, like I can't wait to see this happen play out in Doctor Strange. Like right. I can't wait for. You know, Dormu to do that backstab is there's nothing there. He's a clean slate, yeah. which could hinder or hurt or or help them a great deal. Mm-hmm. It can give him a lot of room to negotiate. You know, the narrative, or it can be just like, ah, oh, we're just gonna do Constantine. We're gonna do Constantine. Give him a shotgun. That see, that's the thing. Like, one, all right, my our, our theory, and I know you feel the same way about this too, is that Marvel doesn't really do a great job on in the books about handling like the hell and the demon stuff. For some reason. And introducing them. And introducing them. It's always hokey when they do it. Right. I think when you have that, because Doctor Strange has been around since the 60s, um, and you have like a bunch of awesome characters that you could introduce with him. You know, you have Dormammu, you have um, Morgan Le Fay, you have uh, Baron Mordo, you have uh, Wong, you know, like, and you have the Night Nurse. Truly. And just like all Dr. Druid and like all this, like the mystical Marvel stuff. I feel like if they were smart, and this is what I want as a fan, you use that as a lead-in for for more characters in the Avengers universe, with him being kind of like the guy who can see trouble before it happens, you know? And he's also a weird segue into the street-level stuff, too. Yes. Because he is such a touchstone for the Marvel New York. So mm-hmm. if you're if you're smart, this is an opportunity for you to kind of realize some of the stuff you're doing on Netflix with the Marvel movie properties. Moon Knight, Iron Fist, Power Man, even Spidey. Daredevil. That Daredevil. Yeah. Like even that weird kind of like spidey fantasy that we have that we want somebody to relinquish, you know. Because they're doing a good job of creating the Marvel universe. Like that's what they're essentially doing. They're creating a cinematic mm-hmm. Marvel universe. So the really good stuff is if they they're doing a good job with everything. They need to create that community of superheroes in uh, the Marvel universe. Yeah. They're doing a good job, but this is going to be a crucial time. And I think that the Doctor Strange stuff has the biggest opportunity. To kind of play with it. Just like how Guardians of the Galaxy works, that it's a, a property, another one like Doctor Strange, where mm-hmm. it doesn't have that touchstone, doesn't have that great storyline. It's just you love the characters, you love what they, you know, what right. they, the potential for them. And you could do a great deal with Doctor Strange. The right guy, the right writer is going to make all mm-hmm. the difference on this that movie. Director, too. I think uh, my my directing pick, Dave Fincher. Yeah, already. Yeah. yeah. Um, <laughs> you think they're going to do Cumberpatch? Goatee? No goatee. Uh, I think he's going to want to do. The goatee. I don't know mm-hmm. if they're gonna want to do the Scott Derrickson. This is the guy that did Sinister. He's directing it. Great. So horror. Awesome. Like heavy horror. Uh, so after that nice little film, Guardians of the Galaxy two, perfect. May fifth, two thousand seventeen. Uh, Thor Ragnarok, July twenty eighth, two seventeen. Awesome. Uh, Black Panther. Which Great. Is the other big news. Uh, November third, two thousand seventeen. Star Chadwick Boseman. I feel like Black Boseman. Man. Black Panther is huge. Well, yeah, um, he's beating everyone to the punch uh, with the uh, black community. Yeah, like, DC doesn't have that. Right. There's yeah. There's really like who do you have? Cyborg. Yeah, Cyborg's the 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 one character that they've been shoving into your throat, down your throat for like the past who knows how many years, like five years. Um, I think it's interesting that you have uh, like as a fan again, you know, it's interesting that you have Black Panther. It's a shame that Wesley Snipes isn't. Oh, get out of in here. his thirties anymore. Get out of here. Um, There's so many other choices than Wesley Snipes. I know, but still, I would, I would, not, I would go far away from Wesley Snipes. That's such a way of putting, like, making him go back to like '90s Marvel crap. See, and I want, I see, I wouldn't mind the the Blade cameo in Doctor Strange. Fine, yeah, 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 we'll okay know, with that. That's fine. Yeah, uh, the street level stuff, and yeah. like, plus, like, it doesn't really look like Snipes is doing all that much. He could easily do a Blade. I'd watch a Blade Netflix show. But it's not, I don't think they can they do it at this point. I think New Line still has Blade stuff. No, I think I think Blade revert over. Yeah, possible. I think Blade's up for grabs, man. It's been a while. I think the last Blade movie was like two thousand three. Oh, it's a long time. Ago. Yeah, a long, long time. Um, is that the one with Triple H? Yes, yes. that was terrible. Blade I Trinity. think that was one after that. Nah, nah. Trinity was the last one. Um, was there a TV show or something? Also, wasn't it like a spinoff they did, or like a female Blade? That's a good question. Yeah, I feel like there was like a spinoff. I could just be thinking of the Daredevil crap. No, I think I think you're right. Are you thinking of Crow Stairway to Heaven? No, definitely not. I always think about Crow Stairway to Heaven. <laughs> the TV show. Yes. Um, what else? What else we got? We also got after Black Panther, Captain Marvel, another huge thing, July six, two thousand eighteen. <laughs> That's gonna be see even not even going into it. I'm for some reason I'm very very excited about Captain Marvel. Um, 
because they've done Marvel has done a great job of putting her in the forefront as like a strong female hero. You know, like she's on all she's been in all the Avengers books. She's had her own uh, series like for the past couple of years. She bears the Marvel banner, right? She bears the the Marvel banner. Um, Katie Sackhoff would be my number one pick okay. for that. And you said who was up for it? Um. Amy Adams? It was on Newsarama, and their money is on Emily Blunt. Emily Blunt. I like her, but <coughs> no thanks. <clears throat> it was Katie Sackhoff was born to play Captain Marvel. She's yeah. I mean, she's a character. She's great. Uh, I think she. I remember when they, she posted those pictures of like the leather and, and, and yes. I think that I still think that's it was all bullshit and that she was really getting fitted and everything. So, really. Uh, she's gonna be the bridge also between Guardians of the Galaxy and the Avengers, which is gonna be start going. Do the cosmic stuff through the Avengers, right? So she's perfect for that. Mm-hmm. Uh, Plus, also another uh, another feather, and I feel like if if anybody's listening to cast Katie Sackhoff as Captain Marvel, military stuff in Battlestar Galactica, Carol Danvers, military background. Hell yeah, man! Yeah, she's perfect for it. She's mm-hmm. built for that role. Like there, I don't think it's a better choice than her. Uh, after that, November second, two thousand eighteen, Inhumans. Cool. The mutant problem. Right, exactly. That's like that's the the parentheses underneath the title. I think that's gonna be the. T- I think out of all this stuff, that's the toughest sell. Mm-hmm. Um, again, you don't have the just like how a lot of these other stories, there is no big story within humans. Um, in terms of like, oh man, I, oh, I can't wait till we see like Karnak like smash that thing. But you also have like that's the thing that we said about Guardians, where you ended up with like a fantastic movie. Absolutely, yeah. and I think Inhumans kid has the potential. To be a ridiculously awesome flick. See, it could be. Like, I really, like, I think that, I mean, everything is going so well for them that mm-hmm. I just feel like there's always going to be like that other shoe is definitely going to be great. <laughs> the drop. Uh, the thing about humans is like what they've been doing with the comics where it's been featuring like Medusa, the, a little bit of the royal family, but more focused on these new inhumans that are like, you know, it's like a hero storyline mm-hmm. where it's a guy, like the everyday guy who gets like flame powers and, and okay. all this stuff. So I'm afraid, I'm afraid of them doing too much with that shit. Yeah. I, if I want to, if I want made an awesome and human story, I would do incorporate the celestials, the whole, you know, the Kree stuff. Like, Go cosmic. Yeah, like explain yeah. the history of inhumans. Like do a half an hour of like the birth of the Marvel Earth mm-hmm. and like talk about the different races and the influences celestials had on, on them and everything. Yeah. See my 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 story that my 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 fantasy story for an inhumans movie is start it on Earth, um, with the Kree stuff. And like the celestial stuff started on Earth in the, at the end of the dino- the age of the dinosaurs, right? And then something happened where they all had to leave, and the movie is them coming back with Black Bolt as their king, and they're okay with that. you know they're coming back to Earth or whatever, or they meet they're in space and they're on their way back to Earth and they do a bunch of space stuff, and then the end of the movie is them hovering over New York City in Adelon. Yes. Uh, By the co- way, there was a blade. Yeah, blade I would say that. Go ahead. Uh, that uh, coach is right. Uh, yeah, think. Sticky Fingers. I think, wasn't it Fredo? No, it was Sticky Fingers. Yeah? Yeah. Okay. It was Sticky Fingers because he did, because Sticky Fingers was on the shield. And that's also, remember that? Oh, yeah. And that's when that the Blade series started. So weird. Yeah. Such a weird Blade. Wow. Blade the series. And that was like way after his, like a piece of shit movie. Mm-hmm. Uh, So after Inhumans, we got... Avengers Infinity War Part 1, May 4th, 2018. Fantastic. Followed by May 3rd, 2019 for Part 2. It's crazy. Yeah, wait a year for that shit. Mm-hmm. Uh, which is going to be the great and pretty much our Infinity Gauntlet storyline. Yeah. Getting all the characters that you've been watching. It'd be amazing if they incorporate the Netflix guys. Yeah. Uh, and <laughs> so throw everybody at Everybody. Like, why not? If, if it's going to be a two-part movie. Well, you know Garns Galaxy is going to be involved in this stuff. You know these new dudes that they're introducing are going to be a part of it. Um... Super excited for that shit. It seems like they're doing all the right shit. Ant Man's mm-hmm. gonna be part of this whole gig. Quicksilver and Scarlet Witch are being introduced to all stuff. Yeah, a lot of cool shit. Um, there's so much to do, and we're on the third phase. And like we've we've you know we've done all the things right. So we've had these characters introduced uh, individually. Mm-hmm. All were awesome. All the movies were pretty much awesome. We paid off. We put this team together, and now we're moving into like the weirdo shit of mm-hmm. like. Like, holy shit, I never thought we'd ever get, you know, an Infinity Gauntlet storyline in Marvel, Marvel Comics. I never thought we'd yeah. get that free, that that far. And then we have DC, who's just putting their shit together now. Uh, Superman, Batman, you guys still excited? 
It's like it, it's 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 a really poor comparison between the two of them. It really is. I had a I had a, on that note, I had a conversation with my wife last night about how like casting for movies, right? Where it, you're Superman, like she she loves Henry Cavill. Yeah, she's like she would drop me in a heartbeat. Yeah, for for okay. mine, mine for a glimpse of Henry Cavill yeah. somewhere on the street, yeah. you know. Um, if your husband could be lost forever, or you can see Henry Cavill take a shower, <laughs> <laughs> I'd be lost forever. Watch his butt. Um, so. For Superman, you get the you know he's got to he's got to have the body of a man, but the but a sweet face that you can trust, right? I was like, what about Batman? She was like, no, but as like a, as like a female, Batman doesn't have to be hot, but he shouldn't be Ben Affleck, <laughs> pretty much. You know? Well, yeah, I mean that's that's a that's a given. But it works for Keaton. She was like, Keaton was all right as the first Batman. He's like, awesome, like oddly yeah, attractive. He was, uh, he was you know? great. Because he was awesome. It's Michael Keaton. Like even yeah. though like he doesn't have looks or anything, he's got the first. Val knowledge. Kilmer right. was the worst, right? Or George Clooney. Clooney. I think. I think. I still stand by this. I don't think that they're worst. I just think they're in the wrong movies. Mm-hmm. Clooney, come on, this guy is an awesome Batman. Like on paper, on he's paper, yeah, awesome. Like mm-hmm. it just you had to deal with Joel Schmo- Schumacher's bullshit. Schumacher. Schumacher. <laughs> uh, same thing with Val Kilmer. I love yeah. Val Kilmer. Huge Val Kilmer fan. Yeah, yeah. And I think that he was definitely in the wrong film. Yes. He's awesome. The wrong man. director. Yeah, all that. Yeah, for I mean, all those flicks. You know. Valkymer was which one? The second one? Third. Third, Third. one. The Hel- first. The first two were um, Keaton. Keaton. Yeah. Keaton. Yeah, Valkymer was the first one. Yeah, the first replacement. His was the Jim Carrey oh, one. No. Yeah. yeah uh, Tommy Lee Jones. Tommy Lee Jones is Two Face. Yeah. yeah. He was a secondary character, which is so freaking weird. In that mm-hmm. movie. Didn't have any speaking part either. Poison Ivy. Who? Who didn't? As part of the roles? next movie, right? Um. Yeah. Uh, Tommy Lee Jones' Two Face did not speak one line in Batman Returns. Really? I don't and, uh, remember Batman that. Forever. I think yeah. he said something. I think he said one thing when yeah. he got killed, and that's it. Um, then Batman and Robin. Then it was Poison Ivy and Bane and Mister Freeze. No, no, not Bane. Not yeah, yet. it was no the no Batman and Robin. Poison uh, when, when, Ivy. No, Bane. yeah, it was Bane, and then it was um, Poison Ivy. Which one was Chris O'Donnell? And Mister Freeze. Th- no, the third Chris O'Donnell was uh, Batman Forever. And in Batman and Robin. Where, where is the Riddler? Well, and when is Jim Carrey's Riddler? That was Batman that's, Forever. That was Batman. So they had everybody in that. Right. That was that was Jim Carrey, Tommy Lee Jones. But Bane was like a joke, Somebody right? Like a, yeah. Wasn't Bane, Bane was a joke? It was in the, yeah. the Poison Ivy one. He was the the henchman for. Uh, yeah. Yeah. He was in Batman and Robin, which uh, is the Mister Freeze one. Yeah. 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 Which is the worst piece of shit. Mm-hmm. And they're I, coming out. With, and they're coming with comic book. books about that. They're doing like a pseudo sequel to that. Like how they do Batman sixty six. Like yeah. yeah. Focus on like Adam West uh, Batman. They're gonna make a series of comics about. Like that shitty Batman world. That era of, of Batman Robin. The throw up. See, I always all right. Because <laughs> you went you went from your I honestly like and this like I, I love Batman and uh, Batman Returns because they hold up as weirdo Tim Burton movies. And if you look oh, at hell yeah, yeah. If yeah. you look at all Tim Burton movies on like like one like SWAT, like one canvas, they're all awesome. And they all have the same aesthetic. He created his own universe. I'll throw Batman in that little corner of the universe, right? I mean, even even like what is it? Uh, the Halloween cartoon, uh, Nightmare Before Christmas. Right. It has that same feel. Yeah, it's all yeah. it's all that Tim, Tim Burton stuff. Yeah. But then it went to the Joel Schumacher like vomit. Like I associate those two movies with just like like your psychedelic vomit. Like not the good end of like a psychedelic trippy movie. Just the the crap that's left over well, when you want to go home. Well, his his <laughs> version. Like if you hear him talk about when the movies are being made and like describe what Batman is, it was someone who looked at comic books as this, like, if they're wild, they're crazy, they're mm-hmm. colorful. Like, he's never read a comic book in his life. He's just heard about comic books. Yeah. Like, yeah. they got color, and they've got, like, superheroes, and that's what we got I mean, it was a shit. closer. it was a closer homage to the original Batman, like, Batman West, West stuff. Yeah. yeah. That, I mean, more than... And that's the shit he grew up with and everything, yeah. and that was his his baby, but, like, hey, just watch the last two movies. Watch Batman. You know what it is? Like, I, I think with Tim Burton, you're right on the line of kitsch, now right. he's now he's totally kitsch at this yeah. point, but like back then he was still in that line of making like the quirky stuff still cool. Mm. So you can do like a large in life Jack Nicholson Joker and have the colors yeah. and have all this stuff and Prince playing in the background and to be awesome. Yeah. Uh, and the same thing, I like, I don't have a single problem with Batman Returns. Like I've never had a complaint about yeah. it. You you get Christopher Walken. Oh, absolutely. You get Dan DeVito. You get Michelle Pfeiffer at the hottest. Mm. You get a really like weird existential Batman story. <laughs> you have penguins carrying off uh, to penguins' dead body into the water. Uh, Pee Wee Herman. Yep. Like everything. Like what? What? And it's super gothic. It's yeah. super super dark yep. and gothic. I love Batman Returns. 
So um, did you um talk talking about Tim Burton? Though, did you <laughs> see fish. the um Big Fish? Yes. Uh, no, Dan uh, Gilroy, uh, the writer and director of. You don't like Dan Gilroy? No, no, no let's keep it. I'm, I'm having a side conversation. Yeah. Sorry. Dan Gilroy said uh, because he worked on the Tim Burton Superman. Yeah. He spoke about like what it could have been. He, there's this whole article about like what yeah. it was supposed to happen. I find that fascinating. The whole Superman Tim Burton thing. Yeah. Well, yeah, yeah. There's a wasn't there, isn't there a documentary out with yeah. like all that stuff, like the production stills and like the mock-ups of yep. of uh, interviews Nick Cage, yeah. of Nick Cage in the suit. I, you know what, like, I think if if Tim Burton made the movie the way he wanted it, it would have been interesting. But because there was so much studio garbage that went along with it, oh yeah, um, that's why he dropped out. You know, yeah. and Kevin Smith and all that shit. Yeah, it's, I, uh, I I find it's that fascinating. Yeah, the fascinating story about that. I'm so mm. happy that movie was never made. Oh though. God, yeah. could you imagine yeah. him as Batman? Uh, Superman? Superman? Uh, I could. I mean, like, I think there was such a skewed version of what a good movie was at that time. Yeah. What like, year was this? This was like early 2000, I think. It was like late 90s, early before, 2000s. Before the, before the, the Batman Superman Begins. Series. Like, it was a glimmer. Like, there was, it was just on the cusp of like, we made a couple of mo- great, like, Batman movies, mm-hmm. and now we have no idea what to do with comic movies at all. We're just going to start going crazy and just get some talent together. Like, we'll, get, we'll get Tim Burton, Nicolas Cage, yeah. Kevin Smith wrote the script. Perfect. Whatever year Wild Wild West, two years before that. Oh, exactly. yeah. Because yeah. it was the same producer that had the same tropes in that movie that he put in, that they were supposed to be in that Tim Burton movie. But that movie came, but Bob O.S. came out after the fact because mm-hmm. he used all the tropes. Like, he was building towards the giant spider thing. Right, right. Like, the giant spider was in Wild Wild West was the coup de grace. Like, oh, yes, mm-hmm. finally, I did it. I did yeah, giant spider. So, figured two years before Wild Wild West came out was when that Tim Burton thing, Ridiculous. two or three years, whatever. Wow. Um, but uh, listen, it's it's it was like it's a weird time. Like the fact that Tim Burton did the first two Batman movies, which it's just kind of interesting. It cements itself in like a weird little area of pop culture. But look at it. But look at the what's weird is like look at the DC shit. Like mm-hmm. DC hasn't had the success that Marvel did. Marvel definitely in the same time didn't even have close to any success, right. any success whatsoever yeah. for making a good movie. They dropped all their shit. They got their shit together and mm-hmm. they made a great universe. DC, just like their comic books, have restarted and rebooted their shit so many times mm-hmm. that they ca- that can't go anywhere. Like you've you've been stuck in the Batman origin story and Superman origin story for thirty years, yeah, <laughs> forty years, yeah. the same shit. Where now you've have you know you're you're getting close to killing off Captain America. Mm-hmm. You're getting close to Infinity War, man. Infinity Gauntlet. Yeah. Like you've you've made it that far where like you can literally go into you can create your dream of having a crossover play out on screen. Never would have thought this would ever happen. Right. That we get in Guardian Galaxy stuff. I'm looking at DC stuff now, like what their <laughs> their film thing is. So 2016, Batman versus Superman, doing justice. This is your foray, mm. old Batman. That's still so weird to doing old Batman. Right, isn't it? At the start of their storyline. Yeah, like, it's so How freaking... old is he? He's, he's Ben Affleck's age. Yeah. He's, he's like, he's supposed like to be... 40-something years old. Yeah, he's yeah. supposed to be Dark Knight Returns... Uh, Batman yeah. in spirit of like the the broken yeah, they said that already. Yeah. What? They, I mean, it's the Dark Knight older Batman. Yeah. So but is no, that, is no, he... he's not from. It's not the Batman Begins Batman. It's a brand new. It's, it's a, a brand, brand new, new Batman. brand new Batman. It's, like, just, a pre, it's a pre-existing Batman. The pre-existing <laughs> Batman that never existed before, which is so okay. ridiculous because they like that. I think. I think. Like honestly, like, and you're a fresh Superman, like a brand new Superman. We've we dump on DC a lot, but with the movies, it's so insane not to like look at Marvel and say like tear out a page of that book and say you know what we <laughs> they're like Marvel doesn't even acknowledge their the Spider Man and um. Electra and Daredevil and all like they move past it and Punisher and all that's exactly they move past it. They broke it down and they said, "Let's how how can we do this better?" You know what? Our new Phase One: Captain America, Iron Man, Thor, Avengers. Back phase Two: Avengers. All the sequels, uh, and, and more, yeah, and more. And then Phase Three: We're gonna blow your effing mind with all this cool shit. And plus, we got stuff on Netflix too. So check us out, right? DC. Amazing. And st- like, all right, yo, we knocked it out of the park. Batman Begins, Dark Knight, <laughs> uh, the one with Bane. Awesome. These movies are fantastic. And then maybe, and then like, oh, it's like a huge chance with Superman, mm-hmm. which worked out very well. Which, yeah, great flick. And I don't know how much. I don't think it did numbers, huge numbers at the box office. Batman Begins was when it came out was like it's it, all three of the movies were phenomenon mm-hmm. box office wise. Um, Superman it was the iffy one, which panned out very well yeah. as far as like just a really good Superman movie. Creatively. And then all of a sudden they're like, you know what? We got these three movies. We got the Superman movie. You know what we're gonna do? We're Batman gonna, sells. We're, we're yeah, we're gonna make a sequel to the Superman movie, but we're gonna throw Batman in there. But it's not, it's not 
the Christopher Nolan Batman. It's an older version of a Batman that we're going to make you believe already existed. And I think also they're going to play with that idea. I think they're going to kind of like hint that this may be the same Batman from Batman Begins. Should be. Um, But that was my question. Like, because it's so soon, right? Because Batman Begins was a couple of years ago. uh, The whole series, you know, that Batman... It's going to be difficult for like the the person like the average viewer to but, go in there and be like, oh wait a minute, this isn't. Uh... I th- but I think that's the thing is they they're expecting someone to be confused, and if you know you want to make that connection that this is the Batman Begins, this is an thing. We're not going to hurt you for it. Like it's not going right. to like it's still an older Batman for whatever reason. Yeah, and plus like older Batman's probably got like a dead Alfred. So who wants yeah. to see a Batman movie with no I'm, Alfred? Yeah, yeah. I, I, is I, Alfred I, dead? I, they haven't cast anyone for it, so yeah. probably. So after they're following up, so, weird. so this is like, and this is yeah. also their, this is like their Iron Man one, where uh-huh. it's like introducing the rest of the DC universe. It's introducing this new mm-hmm. world. So how they follow that up? Uh, well, what, is this, what is this leading to? This is leading to the JLA. Yeah. 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 So this is eventually leading the payoff is getting to their Avengers point, where like you have Iron Man one, you introduce Nick Fury, and you introduce, I mean, but, and you're so, but you're so far behind. This but is, it took them years to get to Avengers. I mean, it took them how many years? Two, three years, I think. Iron Man, the so first like four Iron years, Man. maybe. The first Iron Man. First Iron Man was what, 2008? Remember. Remember. It's a yeah. long time ago. It's Six almost, years it, ago, yeah. It's it's a while ago. Yeah. It's it feels like a, a millennium. Like, mm. and like those movies, like if you watch 2008. Like, if you watch Iron Man one and even Avengers, it's so dated compared to like mm. where they are going and where they how it's evolving. Iron Man one especially, yeah. Yeah. Uh so you know, this is all leading to this JLA stuff, mm. which is gonna take them a while to get to also. Uh so their follow-up movie after that is, of course... Aquaman. No, Suicide Squad, which yeah. has nothing to do with JLA. Yeah. Which I'm excited to see because that could be their Guardians of the Galaxy. Mm. Um, like, have a really dark, quirky theme. Could be. Could be. Mm. It could be a complete piece yeah. of shit. Yeah. Uh, and that's followed by Wonder Woman, of course, in 2017. So 2016, we have two movies. Batman vs. Superman, Suicide Squad. 2017, Wonder Woman, which I just read that it takes place in the 1920s. And the sequel will take place in World War Two. Okay, so you're jumping twenty years. Yeah, that's years. cool. Yeah, so that's kind of cool. You're still, yeah, and you're yeah. still introducing uh, one woman to the world. You know, outside of Batman versus mm. Superman, building towards JLA. Uh, then <laughs> follow that movie, of course, 2017 with Justice League Part One after Wonder Woman, uh-huh. uh, directed by Zack Snyder, Ben Affleck, all the people, Amy Adams, supposedly in it also. Where is uh, Jason Momoa, Aquaman, and all this? So The Flash comes out in 2018, mm-hmm. which is also you're going to have to now explain to Barry Allen's because you have your Flash TV show, Barry Allen. Right. And now this Barry Allen, which I just think is a weird choice to do. Like, I, I, mm-hmm. like if I was DC and the commitment I'm making to a Flash TV show, yeah. I would make that guy into the movie. Have you watched it yet or no? No. Um, I could see why they picked him as Barry Allen because he's got that weird like porn fed. A lot, yeah, but a lot of it is the Barry Allen that we when we used to get comic book collections at the store, we'd flip through all the flashes because the covers would always it would always have something to do with Barry Allen's hubris as like not only am I the fastest man alive, I'm pretty smart too. Yeah. I'm smarter than you, you know. Flash facts and all that stuff. So they do a lot. Like, you could see why they picked him because he has that glint of, like, I'm superior. The asshole. <laughs> yeah, you know. Um, I, and again, like, I was, I was explaining the mythos to, we were watching an, an episode the other night, and I was trying to explain to my wife, like, the whole thing behind the Flash and how my favorite Flash has always been Wally West because that, yeah. that's the Flash that we grew up with. Oh, yeah. Know? Um, and who I feel you associate the rogues with more. Yeah, I think so. Especially because of the Jeff John stuff. Yeah, exactly. Because you, you like they, Wally West was the one that took the rogues and made them into the formidable foes. They right. were the guys who just constantly get their ass kicked. Right. This made like Captain Cold into an awesome character. The teams, yeah, like, yeah. the team of the rogues. Like, listen, we have a we have a credo. Why the wizard's yeah. crazy powerful godlike dude? Mirror master, also godlike dude. Godlike dude. Yeah. Um, the trickster. The top. <laughs> the top. Um, all of them. They're they're they were an, they're an awesome. They're they're heat probably. Wave. They're my that's my favorite grouping of like B level DC guys. Weirdy bad guys. Yeah. Yeah. Heatwave. Heatwave. Um I love Heatwave. I love Heatwave. It's such a weird character too. Yeah. Um, but you know, like that like that's that's where, you know, your strong like and, and I said it last week, DC's strong suit is not movies, it's their television show because the way they work everything in there. You can't work stuff like that into a movie. It's easy with Batman because you you can do it formulaically where you're like, you know what, this movie, Joker, this movie, Bane. 
This movie's Riddler. And look, that movie, this. And know? look at eighty six Batman. Like you didn't even do the origin story. Mm. Like you did. That's one of the first movies that did that, where it's just like we're jumping in. You know, of course, you know Batman's story. Yeah. And the movie even plays with it by having a, a like this almost the same murder slash robbery get thwarted by Batman. Right. The, like you watch coming into it, like oh, that's a weird choice for like Batman's parents are mm-hmm. kind of slovenly. <laughs> the, the flashback, like the, the word flashback. Yeah. yeah. Um. And then, like, every movie does the origin thing. And that's the thing. Like, you made a great point about how, like, we've been living in a Batman or Batman Superman origin story for the Groundhog last 30 Day, years. Man. You know, it's always the same. As if people don't know. You know all of these characters. They've been mm-hmm. around since the fucking 30s, man. Yeah. You know what these guys are. Like, this, even if, like, you have so, like, your little baby has some idea of who Batman is, what he's doing. <laughs> I'm a baby. I know Batman. Big guy's parent got killed, huh? <laughs> so, 2018, after Flash. Mm hmm. Then we're going into 2018. Uh, that, but that's, that's in 2018. And Are right we just that, running on DC right now? Yeah. Okay. Then Aquaman, which starring Jason, Jason Momoa. Yeah. That's in 2018. I like Hawaiian Aquaman. I'm cool with that. I'm okay with that. Like, uh, <laughs> I don't know how many people are going to want to be rushed to the theaters to go see Aquaman. Uh-huh. Like, I like I love Aquaman. I love the character. I don't have ever pictured Jason Momoa as Aquaman. I can see how it can work and make him yeah. into like the undersea Conan. I, that's what I'm saying. If you yeah. made it like, like just like you can make it work. 300, but underwater. Yeah, that's fine. <laughs> Absolutely, you can you can make it work. I don't know uh, if they're gonna be able to make it work. Yeah, because uh, a lot of, like you, you have to also lock down directors and writers for this stuff. Mm-hmm. When uh, when you just announced Avengers, like the the entire Marvel plan for the next like five to six <laughs> yeah. years, you're gonna want to work at that those guys as opposed to these m- mooks. Yeah. All right. So 2019. Killing it with Shazam, throwing the rock, throwing the rock as Black Adam. Yeah. What do you think of that? I mean, I like I love Shazam. Uh, am I been clamoring for a film? Absolutely not. Is it? Are you? Are people gonna relate this to Shaquille O'Neal? No, I think it? I think you're thinking of Kazam. Kazam. I think that <laughs> Rock why. is going to be so awesome as Black Adam yes. if they do it right. Yeah. If they, I think it's he's an mm-hmm. awesome character. He is like one of more one of DC's few really awesome anti-heroes mm-hmm. and i think if done right he would, he could just um, e- immediately go into a spin-off film his own franchise yeah easily See, i'll agree with that too but i also feel like you have your your there's the two universes of, of dc where one you have your well thought out artistic flicks the batman begins universe and the man of steel universe and then you have the garbage like green lantern yeah. You know, where I feel like most of this is going to fall into like that garbage category of like, let's throw a lot of money at it. Extras. And, yeah. Just like, let's throw a lot of money at it. The kids will love it. You but know? there's not, there's not even like, I don't think there's a really well thought out plan. I think this is just like the executives came down and said, okay, then we'll do, uh, what do we got left? We got Flash. We got Aquaman. Uh, Shazam. We'll do Shazam. Okay. We'll do Shazam in 2019. So Shazam leads into 2019's This is League Part 2. Mm-hmm. Uh, see, so 2018. Whatever storyline's going on, Just League Part One has to be pretty awesome to keep you interested for another three years. Uh, when you're done with that, Cyborg, Cyborg the film, great, starring Ray Fisher, in 2020, and then Green Lantern relaunched in 2020. Now, it makes zero sense, man. So let's do let's do the let's do the real the real shit. See competition. Mm. So 2016 has is the first one for them. They're going up against Captain America: Civil War. Superman, Batman. Yeah. So they already, they were gonna do head to head same day. Mm-hmm. Uh, DC very smartly backed down, and right. they moved to I think the following weekend, um, November fourth, two thousand sixteen. So Suicide Squad is gonna be up against Doctor Strange. Okay. Um, Wonder Woman is going to be up against friggin' Guardians of the Galaxy. Okay. And Thor Ragnarok. Uh, Just League Part One, which is like the most important thing in, in the scheme of things. That's 2017, so that's going up against. It's pretty smart, actually. On Marvel's part, they're going up against Thor Ragnarok and Black Panther. That's that year. Sweet. So like they can. That's just a chance on their part. They yeah. can do whatever they want with it. Like mm-hmm. you're up against Justice League, so they let Justice League do their shit. Uh, <laughs> calm down, do their shit, and then 2018 rolls around. You're getting Captain Marvel versus. Yeah. Um. I say two. Uh, Flash and Aquaman. Great. What was the other movie that came out that year? And then Humans. Mm-hmm. And then by the big one, when Infinity War rolls around, it's 2018. It's going to be... So crazy. It's going to be up against Flash and Aquaman also. Mm-hmm. And then the next year, it'll be Just League Part 2 will be up against Avengers Part 2. Great. And Shazam. So, all right. So, what so they're up to 2019. 2019 uh-huh. is the cutoff for Marvel. They have, supposedly, DC has Cyborg and Green Lantern. 
schedule what, for what's the last major one for marvel avengers part two avengers part two yeah infinity infinity war part two okay so when is that going to lead into C- civil war civil war is the first thing that happens in phase three civil in phase war happens three. in captain america are they going to do secret wars I think they're going to eventually kind of lead up to something like that. Probably. Because Secret War came doing... before Civil War. Yeah, but that, I mean, it doesn't matter. That's, yeah. I mean, that, you put that wherever you want. But they, they're <laughs> having a Secret War uh, crossover in Marvel this year. Yeah. Yeah. And then that's leading into Civil War again. What? Secret War? Mar- no, uh, Marvel is doing Civil War. Yeah, that's in Captain, but Captain America, <laughs> the next Captain America movie is called Civil it's War. It's called, yeah. yeah. So it's its own baby own by thing. itself. Um. So what you're telling me is that DC is going to make, uh, what's the first one on the list? The Su- first, the, besides Superman, Batman? What's uh, the next? Suicide Squad. So Suicide Squad, what you're telling me is uh, it's going to flop and it's going to ruin the schedule of movies for DC. And Marvel should have picked up uh, The Rock as Namor. And that's, yeah. and that's how you, you, end, uh, you end Captain America Part 3. Normandy Beach. Suicide Squad <laughs> is like I, I I'm excited about Suicide Squad. Mm-hmm. Like I, I do want to see something with them. Yeah. But it's just such a weird choice after Batman versus Superman. Mm-hmm. Like I would maybe do Wonder Woman after that. Yeah. But I can see them. You're right. Like I think it's gonna flop, and they're gonna fast track Justice League Part One. Yeah. They're gonna skip over all the other shit. Like okay, Justice League. Right it's, now. Yeah. You know, like it's so like and plus like this stuff like it's all with the Marvel movies you get like hard. <laughs> Uh, fact, you get pictures. You're like, check out so and so from the set of whatever. We just cast this guy. Blah yeah. blah blah. Boom. With all the DC stuff, it's just like, yeah, you know what? Like, this is our plan. Nothing's real. Even with Superman, Batman, you saw maybe three pictures so far. Yeah. Of like Ben Affleck and I think the, the Henry Cavill suit. Yeah, very, and that's very controlled in the Batmobile. Yeah, you know, yeah. and like it's very controlled. It's like they don't really give away too much. But if you remember when um, Batman Begins came out, like we we're getting, st- like we we're getting. Um, non-contextual stills from the movie yeah like where you're like whoa what's that like yeah. is that who's that is that it's liam neeson like what's he doing yeah. like who's he supposed to be you're not really getting that from dc you yeah. know and it's like it kind of drives you up a wall well the hype yeah i mean the hype mm-hmm. is at at like a neutral right now because yeah. of batman versus superman because it all really is riding on that yeah like that is your intro into you know your your you know next 10 years of films mm-hmm. and what i think is gonna really hurt them also is dc doesn't have an infinity war it doesn't have a civil war they have crisis they have crisis yeah. which is them just killing their universe and right. starting it well, which is a very complicated story if you have crisis all their all the major dc events are reality very, breaking right, events very complicated too yeah. you know or like their world changing events because you had crisis you have i'll throw invasion in there because it was a giant crossover doomsday maybe um millennium yeah. doomsday uh Zero hour. Well, who's it? Who's going to adapt Evasion? Who's going to adapt Millennium? Who's going to do Armageddon? Armageddon, yeah, yeah. Um, Armageddon it, would probably be one of the more interesting ones. But like, did I do Wave Rider and Hawk and Dove and, and Monarch? Yeah, yeah. Like, it's it's so crazy. Man. But that's what I'm saying, like you, like you're you're at, we're at that point in Marvel where you're adapting these huge. You're like, doing Civil yeah. War. You're doing Civil War. Yeah, and you're doing uh, what do they call it? Um, Infinity Gauntlet. Infinity Gauntlet. You know, in in the same span, the same cycle. Yeah. And you're not you're not even getting close. Like you don't even know what Justice League is gonna be. Yeah. Like it's gonna be encapsulating. Like what Star and Lex Luthor? Is right. that what we're gonna go yeah. to? Yeah, like are you doing <laughs> Big Starfish? But as I'm saying, like the, mm-hmm. this, the the like Marvel's been doing this and killing it for so long. Yeah. And then they unleash this like, oh like DC did their schedule. Yeah. Look at our fucking schedule and look at what we got coming to you. Mm-hmm. Like you're you're it makes DC look completely pathetic. Yeah. In terms of no, it does. how their scope how their scope is really working. Plus, no, no Superman three on that schedule either, which is kind of weird. Yeah, I think they mentioned that it's supposed mm-hmm. to be after the Green Lantern stuff, but I mean that's just nebulous. It's that's just, it is really nebulous because like I I don't know, man. Like you 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 had DC screwed up by not like really um, carrying the ball with the Batman franchise again. Yeah. You know, like I understand self contained movies. You know, you had like your full arc with the character, but you know what? It doesn't really matter because Warner Brothers owns the properties. They could say, like, you know what? Like, he survived. He made it. Christian Bale doesn't you know, really have to be Batman. We've proven that before. The same guy doesn't have to be the same guy yeah. over and over again, you know? Um, and Marvel is definitely squeezing the life out of all these dudes until they have to replace him, you oh, know? Yeah. Which is great. And that's, I think, another reason why they're trying to fast track, not fast track these movies, but why they're investing so much money into it. 
Downey Jr. is going to be around. He'll look the same in the next 10 years, let's say. Yeah. You know, maybe he'll get a little work done here yeah. and there. That's okay. Like, yeah. he's, he's a character you can age, too. Right. Like, yeah. you'll keep him in perpetual middle age or whatever. Mm. Uh, but, like, the aging thing doesn't really factor into Robert Downey Jr. at all. It's right. not something you're concerned with. Mm. But also, what's interesting, too, is that they have, if they were to replace these characters, they also have the benefit of having sidekick characters or legacy characters that would be able to step in. You know, if you introduce Falcon, right. he could take over Captain America. You introduce Winter Soldier, he could take over Captain America. Mm. You have Rhodey. If you really want to do a War Machine thing, you could do a War Machine thing. Yeah. But it's there. Like, mm. you have, like, all these, like, scaffolding yeah. all over the Marvel Universe that's ready to go. It's It seems organic. There's a huge amount of variety. Mm. And everything is, every single movie has been that much better it's true, than yeah. the other one. Do you really think that you're going to walk out of Batman Superman? I don't think it's going to be a bad movie. Right. You know, I think it's going to it's gonna hit all of our buttons. And, like, you're going to see Batman versus Superman. So it's mm. going to be pretty cool. But I don't think you're going to have the same fervor for Aquaman starring Jason Momoa. Or or any of the <laughs> other films I've talked about. You know the last with, hour. You know how uh, <laughs> I, can't, I can't. I have to keep on looking at the list because I can't remember what's on the DC list. Because you don't care. Because you know, yeah. like deep down, you're just like this is yeah. this is so st-. like you've let me down my entire life with movies DC. Like why would you why would you stop now? Apart from the, and again, like it just makes those three Batman movies in their own little entity. Total, well, and that's it. You know. And also when you when you step back and you look at Marvel the company and like where they were like 15, 20 years ago when they're like selling the rights off and like. Now they're like they're owned by Disney. From bankruptcy to <laughs> to Disney. Yeah. And now like you had they're publishing Star Wars comics by like the best dudes in the world. Did you see the first team for Star Wars number one? What was it? Hickman and uh Jason Aaron oh, and right. John Cassidy. Yeah. yeah. And then it's gonna be a rotating cast of like oh, the yeah. all stars doing Star yeah. Wars stuff. But you and you have the possibility that maybe they made you mm-hmm. Star Wars Marvel crap together. I listen, I love it. From bankrupt to baller, bro. Yeah, man. Like it's <laughs> it's and like DC is still trying to put their shit together. Yeah. Like still trying to figure out like it's you're sad, at this point man. where you're still trying to figure out Batman. Mm. Like Batman exactly. is your is your goal. Like that is your mm. the one thing that you can sit back and go, all right, Batman should be easy, friggin' peasy. Yep. We've had three of the best Batman movies, three of the best comic book movies of all time. Mm. And we have no idea what to do with it. And the source material is is fantastic. You yeah. know. Batman's been so take carefully taken care of for the past like who knows how many years. Superman's difficult. Yeah, Superman's very difficult, unlike many levels, you know. Yeah. Um, That's why you had to have him break someone's neck in the first movie. And, uh, yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> the uh, the weird thing with DC and like they don't see it that way is like you know they want to be making those big bucks, those big movie bucks. But you know, like throw their their strong suit is the TV. That's it. Just do. And you know what? The the weird thing about that is that their strong suit has been TV since Smallville, and I never liked Smallville, mm-hmm. but for for a show that lasts eight seasons with such a weird fan following, and it had. A really crazy fan following to, oh, yeah. the, to the point where, like, we'd work at the store and dudes would come in and talk to us about Smallville, and we'd be like, Oh, did you pick up this Superman? I'm like, No, nah, I don't care about Superman. I want Smallville. Yeah. You know, like, this is what I want. I want this. Yeah, I'll, I'll buy the Smallville comic. I don't care about Superman the man. Yeah. You know? But I think it's also the, the reason why Smallville was what it is and why it's still talked about, why it lasted for so long, is because there was nothing else out there. That's true. There was yeah. no option of, like, you still, like, the movies, like, Marvel movies were shitty mm-hmm. at the time. You know, we were coming out of the Schu- the Schumacher era of Batman. Yeah. There was no other option. So, like, seeing a whatever you know, my opinion on it, or whatever, is a quality pro a quality program mm-hmm. about Superman that's more subversive and right. dealing with stuff that you've never really seen dealt with with a super yeah. character. It was a soap opera about Superman. Yeah. Well, they also had they were able to tell a story over a long period of time, which you know right. helped. You know, and they can and and because it's TV and serialized, it functions like a combo. Right. It, but like also like they learn from their mistakes with. Smallville, especially with the fact that like he didn't have all his Superman powers all at once. It was like one season he had X-ray vision, one season like he could jump real far, and then at the end it's like he finally right. flies and all that stuff. Um, they took that to the next level with Arrow, making the flashback his origin instead of saying like th- this is the first episode, this is what happened. Now he's in the city. It's a continuous flashback, which is pretty cool. The Flash throws you right into it. You know, it's immediate. Like by the end of the first episode, it's like it's you like know, he it's- protects the city, and that's it. That's all you need to know. Um, and you have that going on. Plus, you have Constantine. You have uh, Gotham. You have four DC franchises on TV. With I know, like Gotham's not that great, but production wise, it's pretty great. Yeah, you know? no, absolutely. The fact that we can get a, a a show about Batman without Batman <laughs> on it and to 
be on a major network. And it looks crazy. awesome. It Constantine does. looks awesome. Flash and Arrow look great. That's your strong suit, DC. What does Marvel have? Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., which is buff Terrible. <laughs> but I did hear uh, amazing things about the Mockingbird stuff that's going on now. Oh, yeah? But again, like, do I give a shit? No, mm-hmm. I don't no. give a shit. Yeah. But I'm also happy with what I'm getting from Marvel. Mm-hmm. DC is always, like, DC, I think, always has a case of, I mean, it shows through their history of what they do with the company, of, of, like, of they don't know what they are. Yeah. They don't really, they, they sometimes want to be a corporate entity. Sometimes they want to be the, you know, mom and pop comic book place. Yeah. Then they want to be the guys that push the push boundaries or they want to be the guys who, you know, keep the line at 299. Keep, keep the status quo, yeah. 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 That, and then they're like, you know, we have the great American heroes. This is what we do. This mm-hmm. is what we've always done. But th- it doesn't translate to anything. Like, you're so, like, you've done, like, in your comics and your movies, you've done the mm-hmm. origins over and over again. You're, yeah. You've hit this weird, like, Ouroboros of, of the same storyline. And, there's nothing beyond that. Like beyond, like if you take uh, a guy who's maybe read comic books in the nineties, like even Andrew, like mm. you take someone like that who is you, you know your 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 experience with with the J- JLA guys or the DC guys is just what you read in those few comics, like yeah. Return of Superman and Death of Superman and all that stuff. Yeah, they know the origins. Like everyone can tell you what the origins are. But if you go back to them, like, what was your favorite Flash storyline? What was your favorite Aquaman storyline? Mm-hmm. What was that great JLA moment that you really loved from what you've read? All right. It's it. All they can recount is those origins. See, the thing uh, the, the thing also that, that DC suffers from, and especially I think it's going to come to light in the movies also, is that, you know, like your heroes are only as great as your villains, right? Absolutely. DC, like you're the main problem with DC, for anybody who reads comics, even if you're a Fairweather fan, you can go to Marvel and say, like, who is this? Who is that? Villains. Give me villains. And you can doom Thanos, Apocalypse. Venom. The list is... It. Right. Venom. Carnage. The <laughs> list is never ending. But if you're like, all right, give me some villains from DC. Two two names. Lex Luthor, Joker. That's it. That's all you get. Nobody cares. And if they think a little bit longer, they'll, they'll start recounting Batman uh, villains. Right. Or yeah. like, you know, like your odd, like, Justice like the, like the big starfish. My point is that, like, you'll... It's it's hard to do something believable with that kind of. I'm not saying that DC is terrible villains because they have great villains, but not as memorable as Marvel. You know why? Because think about this: subconsciously, your Marvel villains, even if they were created post Stan Lee, still have that Stan Lee voice. Oh, and, yeah. like that that like and he's Galactus. That green goblin, right? You yeah, know, like devourer of world. He's yeah. coming to eat you. You know, and you're like, whoa! This you is have that uniform, like Kirby. You know, right. Ditko, Stanley, shit. Of Larger that than life, yeah. Kind of villainy, you know. Yeah. Magneto, Doctor yeah. Doom, like all these dudes. DC, gr- yes, yeah, Sinestro is a villain. I understand that, you know. He's also guys on comic book. He's a hero, right? You know, like um, uh, Anti Monitor. He's like their Galactus. But but know? the thing is, like you know, like I think DC at some point they realized they're like when when John started getting big. Uh, I think they started realizing what they were gonna that that they had certain limitations that they can use to their advantage. And that's when you start seeing like stuff like it, it, for better or for worse. I love the comic. I know you love the comic. Mm. Um, Identity Crisis, like Identity Crisis, was this, mm. was this moment. Even even John's is um, uh, Flash to a great degree. Yeah, they were able to take these really hokey B level characters because mm. they have tons of DC. Like, there's tons of villains. Like DC yeah. has an incredible amount of characters and villains yeah. that they don't utilize, and showed how ridiculous they were, and showed how like they took character like yeah whatever they made Doctor Light a, a rapist or mm. whatever. That's an extreme, but they took a character who is completely forgettable and made like, oh, just weirdo in a white cape and this weird right. gear, like creeping around, like breaking into your like your base. Yeah. When you're women around. And then you had like guys like um like like we said talk about the rogues before. Mm. Like they 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 were completely fleshed out. They were blue collar dudes. They were doing this for beer mm. money and to just get get by, be their drug habit or whatever yeah. it may be. Then you had like the weirdo stuff in you know, you bring out the trickster and mm. like you get to like the minutia of like DC Universe, and they made they push that to the forward and made it really interesting and weird. Mm-hmm. Now they're just like, screw it. Here's really? more slop. Yeah, here's more slop. We're gonna invent new characters that yeah. are gonna get forgotten to the into the tapestry of DC, or we're just gonna bring back and just utilize the same six guys. Or we're just gonna go through it. Yeah. The new Fifty Two has been revolving around Darkseid since its inception. Yeah, and we're in, or we're going into the third year of it. Yeah, and Brainiac. Yeah, it's 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 weird stuff, man. And it's like and like that like uh, that was like such a weird like renaissance kind of too. Cause like fifty the the fifty two miniseries was one of the best things mm-hmm. of all time because you had the B level dudes doing weird shit. You had there's a point of it, right? You had like Lobo in space who was like who was worshipped as like a like a like a holy. Um, he was like a pastor essentially to like a whole race of beings, and dolphins, uh, and dolphins. Yeah. And you had um, 
one of my favorite parts is that you made that 52 made you care about Booster Gold. It made you care Big about time. Elongated Man. Hell yeah. Um, the Skeets reveal was ridiculous. Uh, and it made you like, it, it did its job in the way that comic books are supposed to make, like do their job. One, after 52 is over, I bought all the Booster Gold, which was awesome. You know, like the time travel stuff, like keeping the universe safe. Like he ended up being the big hero I that nobody answers. knew about. You know? Yeah, like Rapunter, Rapunter being a son. Yeah. Awesome stuff, right? Um, it was like the era of like awesome big reveals. Even um, uh, Infinite Crisis, which I really loved. And I thought I it was phenomenal, it. It was awesome. you know, with like Alex Luthor and the whole, like that was like the big comic book stuff, which was on par, if not better than a lot of Marvel stuff at the time, you know, and DC just couldn't keep that going. And look at that. Look at all those things that you just mentioned too. All those mm. are big assemblages of their entire cast of characters. Right. Like when you look at, um, what was the other one? Inf Infinite Crisis. Mm. You have like, you know, what's his name coming into it? Uh, Psycho Pirate and stuff like that. Like right. Stuff that you, that like these little touchstones that are really, really awesome. Mm. Um, the Black Lantern stuff. Like it was, yeah. it was a return of all these other old characters. Like yeah. you have to utilize and think beyond uh, just the JLA characters. It's yeah. just those yeah. few dudes. Mm -hmm. And you can't always rely on Batman. Like, I'm glad they're doing Suicide Squad, but yeah. I think it's just they're going to handle it so friggin' wrong. Yeah. It's going to be. Like the Suicide Squad is gonna be like Lex Luthor, uh, Deadshot. Deadshot. It's gonna be Expendables. Yes, yeah, Vessels Alone. Actually, if they made an Expendable style movie with Suicide Squad, I wouldn't mind it. Yeah, yeah, I'm okay with that. Even those movies are terrible. They are terrible. Did I you see that uh, Judd Apatow is remaking Pee Wee. What the movie? The, yeah, yeah. Well, it's not remaking. So they're not making another a new one. Pee Wee movie. I'm excited about it. Paul Rubens gonna be in it. Yeah, yeah. It's, him. it's his story. I'll check it out. His story. <laughs> his story. My life is Pee Wee. <laughs> um. I think also, I think everybody should just come back after an absence with long hair and a beard. Yeah, I mean, that's <laughs> a given. Well, they, in the future, then they do have Superman and a beard and long hair okay. and seclusion. That's also, well, that's how Man of Steel begins. <laughs> yeah. That's true. That's true. Um, and that's how should, uh, Batman vs. Superman should be. Funky also. Superman. It's weird. It's, uh, it's so weird being a fan right now because, like, we're, you know, like, we're not, we're not getting any younger. You know, we're like, we're in, we're in our 30s, we're in our early 20s. Um, and you know, when we were kids, you know, you read wizard and it was just like stuff written by people who had the same set of sentiments any across any form of comic book media where it's like, well, no, we're never going to see any of these movies sucks, huh? You know, like we'll never see a good Avengers movie. We'll never see this and that. And like Marvel is doing it and it's awesome. And we get to see these movies on the big screen and they're going to get bigger and, and better. And what's the crazy thing is, is hmm. that is the entire Hollywood blockbuster industry. Like nothing Pretty is making man. more money than those friggin' movies. Like Tom Cruise fighting robots mm. is not gonna cut it anymore. Uh, making a Transformers movie is not gonna cut mm. it anymore. Like people want these large in life superheroes. People want people want awesome actors playing awesome superheroes. Even though that Tom last Tom Cruise movies was awesome. The uh, Edge of Tomorrow. Edge of Tomorrow. I gotta check it out. Man. It's awesome. Yeah. It is so enjoyable. They changed the name of it though. It's not Edge of Tomorrow anymore. Really? It's like murder, kill, repeat now. Really? Yeah. It, when it was first released on DVD, it was Edge of Tomorrow with a subtitle on it. Uh -huh. Like, you know, uh, Play and Die or something like that. And now it's just like murder, death, kill. Really? Yeah, it's weird. I'll, I'll look at yeah, it. Yeah, please look that up, man. That's pretty nuts. Man. I, I do want to check that out. It's good. It's really, really mm -hmm. enjoyable. Uh, I'm sitting on a copy of Maleficent, which I hear is pretty good. bad. Yeah. It's pretty good. Um, live, die, repeat. Live, live, die, repeat. repeat. I, didn't see, uh, I didn't see this week's Sons of Anarchy. It was good. I read a yeah. big a big thing about like how people complain like nothing's happening this season. I think there's a lot. Like, there's a whole lot happening. Yeah. It's pretty brutal, man. But they because they're just they do it they do it a, a lot do it a lot where they extend the storyline. This is like, season milk seven, it. right? Or, yeah, it's the last okay. one. So I'm at I think episode three mm. of I'm this at, season of this of season. season. Good. Um, let's see what I'm at. I can't. I can't remember. I uh I did, I watched... did I tell you my theory? Um, he's gonna kill himself. No, did I tell you my theory about Happy? Uh, uh, I may have told my wife this theory. All right, so you know, you ever watch Gangland or like any of those shows on the History Channel? Uh, yeah, yeah, some of it. Okay, so my thing, I, I I love those shows for some reason. Um, like the true crime stuff. Uh -huh. My theory is that the uh, Happy's a plant, and he's been he's a cop. He's been a cop the whole time. Impossible. And, and that's how they're gonna bring him in. Impossible. He, I think they he's that he ate people. On the show, well, yeah, but you know, like he's he's a cop. I don't Who, who's a cop? Happy, happy. Oh, happy. That's my that's my one of my far fetched theories. No, I think I think he's gonna kill himself. Happy? No, uh, <laughs> Jax? I, I hope not. I think Jackson kills himself. Uh, I think they he... were teasing. You'll see when you watch this episode yeah. that they're teasing something like that because they're going back to all the old Teller stuff, like the old John Teller, yeah, stuff, and they like talking about like why he did what he did and like 
Now they're saying like it may have not been Clay who did it. Okay. That may have just been him offing himself. Or like his uh, or uh, Gemma. No, they're not even playing mm-hmm. with that yet. I mean, yeah. I'm sure that's what they should be leading up to yeah. with the storyline. That but, she's a complete and utter psychopath. Yeah, and there's new Abel shit with it on this episode too. Yeah, that kid's a murderer. <laughs> yeah, man. That, Abel. Yeah, oh wow. Yeah. He calls him. He calls out Gemma today. Really? Uh, it's not. Well, they, they've been hinting uh, that Abel uh, is like his father. Like his father? I don't understand that. Abel is the kid. Yeah. yeah. Like they've been hinting at that. He's the older kid. He's the older kid. Yeah. Um, but and he's like Jax. He's like Jax. No, right. I think he's just he's just damaged. You're a little behind, so like I'm I'm, like, I'm at the place where the trainees come and shoot the whorehouse. Okay. okay. All right. So like two episodes after that, something happens with Abel that is as shocking as it is comical. Oh, tell me. I need to know. Yeah. Yeah. So, which is a weird scene too. All right. So Gemma has anything like, with her is a weird scene. Yeah, Gemma has like a like the other baby. Um, yeah, who I keep wanting to call Thomas, Kane Thomas. Thomas. Uh, he has like she has like baby Thomas, and then she's like, you know, like you're not gonna judge me. You love me. She thinks she's right. gonna get offed. She thinks she's gonna get caught in like her lies because she's been talking to herself this entire season. Well, she's yeah. talking to Tara. Okay, yeah, yeah. yeah. but um, she tells the baby like, I I killed your mother, and I'm sorry. <laughs> and through the crack <laughs> of the door, Abel is just like, <laughs> oh my god. So he he's the yeah. one that knows all this knows. shit. Yeah, and like there's some juice stuff that's laying around now. With, juice. Like, Juice, where he's you know juice uh, stuff, the juice stuff. A lot of where juice he, stuff. where like you know, like you don't know if he's gonna reveal it or that he has to he has to hang out with Marilyn Manson now. <laughs> yeah, Marilyn he's, Manson, it, he's amazing on the show. See, I didn't see that. That was a nice surprise when they killed the cops. I didn't uh, think that was happening. Oh yeah, anything with the Nazis is uh, yeah surprise. A lot of it's killings. It's a very murderous season, man. You know, you know what? All, what's also weird is that I feel like they don't let they don't have Quinn do enough big guy stuff. Quinn's the Undertaker. Quinn, yeah, Quinn's, the Quinn's like badass? the giant. Which yeah. one is Quinn? The American he's, badass. He's like oh, the giant, oh, the big dude, yeah, yeah who yeah. kind of looks like Ogre from Revenge of the Nerds. But like, they don't have him do any big guy stuff. Like, mm-hmm. he should be like lifting there was, stuff. There was that bit, throwing that, cars. There was that one mm-hmm. bit like a few weeks ago. It was, uh, yeah, it was when Chibs was talking to the sheriff in the parking garage, mm-hmm. and he had this really long shot of of Quinn like opening, like on his bike, just like, chilling, and then like opening his phone. Place a call. Uh, like, this is what you're doing with this guy? He's a yeah. monster. Like, yeah. you're just going to have him send his bike and take phone calls? It makes zero sense to have He's the guy who gets the phone calls and hands the phone over yes. to people. Yeah. Um, it's also weird having him on, having a dude so big on the show that A, doesn't do any big guy stuff, and B, um, yeah, it was the bikers because I can see one of them from a mile away. Yeah. Of you know? like, it's tremendous. The, the least conspicuous, like, the least conspicuous dude. Is not Quinn. Well, I also like the fact that when they like, they try to be conspicuous, incons- inconspicuous, when they have like they just take their vest they off. take the vest off and then they have the black van following them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> when like they leave town, they take a the row vest of off. ten bikers uh, and a big black van. <laughs> See, I thought um, I thought the way they killed Juice was have him go out in a shootout, which was a kind of a nice little red herring that they had something yeah. else in mind for him. Yeah. Oh, so they yeah. get him. Uh, right. yeah. He, um, yeah, yeah, you'll, it, it's, you'll it's, see. It's not, yeah. it's not a giveaway. It's, it's, yeah, not at all. Like they, it, he's, he's still alive. It's, he's, yeah. he's working for them again. But the Bobby thing, I'm not gonna ruin the Bobby thing for it. The Bobby thing's, you know what? Like as soon as, as soon as like Bobby was in that scene, I was like, he is very expendable this season. I'm not saying he's dead, but everybody. So know, is but, the is the sheriff corrupt? I think I can't see you you creating a new character to make her a good person when you're. Doing like cataclysmic stuff to this motorcycle club. I think yeah. your your theory was right about the stall stuff. That she's like my somehow theory, related to her. My theory is that my my favorite agent, one of my favorite agents, uh, Agent Stall, the the woman that like drove them crazy. Which one is that? She was the female uh, season one and two. Oh yeah 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 okay. They ended up blowing yeah. her brains yeah. out like when they were doing dealing with the Irish and everything. Yeah. And I think uh, Chibs or or Opie killed her. Uh, I think it was Opie. Like she was the reason like why they uh, why her, the his wife, uh, Opie's wife, gets killed. Like yeah. she did a series of terrible things to to them, and they end up blowing. I think that she's related to to uh, the sheriff, the and new she, sheriff, and she's Jerry. here to seek out her revenge. I think because yeah. it's like it's just you can't have a positive person rolling around. There. No, she can't be. You know, they already said that because the the parking lot scene where she showed her scar. Yeah, she's like, oh, an ex boyfriend. So you know that she's damaged. There's something. Yeah, there's, there's something. There's yeah. gonna be a reveal about her life and that she's getting close to Chibs now and everything. I think that's because like he, she, she singled Chibs out. I think that I agree with you. Like that, she singled him out because he's the dude 
who looks like he, he's like he's he falls for the pretty face. Oh yeah, because you know? he's not the pretty face, and yeah. he's like the sweet guy. You know, yeah. he's the sweetest guy on the team. And I think that um, I think Nero has maybe one or two episodes left yeah. on this. I think he's like, I like Nero. he's talking about he's now he's like really talking about retirement and like mm-hmm. whenever you do that, it's the time. It's like the cop. He's like, yeah, we got yeah. a couple of days left in the force. I need you to come with me, mama. He's done, and that's gonna be my, that's mm-hmm. gonna be the biggest heartbreak for me. I can care less if Jack. How about um? How about the the Spanish guy? Nero. Nero. Is Nero? That's Jimmy Smith. Jimmy Smith. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's the best character on the show. He, he was um. Oh, so he was on Dexter that yes. one season. Yeah. And his, he became a psychopath. Yeah. His Terrible chemistry stuff. with um with Gemma is fantastic. All of them. His stuff with Jack. His, yeah. He's made Jack's a better actor. Come on, Mano. Yeah. yeah. He's great. And uh, I was telling my, my wife was just. He's uh, a cool. He's the nicest. Dude, the Vato, bro. Yeah, he's Original. the nicest Vato. Um, I was like, yeah, I want that Impala so bad. Like his low rider. Oh yeah. And my wife is like, why? I don't. That's want so that stupid. Thing. I'm like, yo, it's Latino. Imagine cruising around Latino heat and uh and like an Impala like that. It slashes tires dope. all the time. True. <laughs> you have to lock that sucker up. All right, let's finish the show. Uh, thank you guys for tuning in. Uh, this has been another episode of Behind the Counter. We hope you had fun. My name is Rich Stambolian. I'm John. Yeah. Good night. <laughs>